The end of the road for Mitsubishi and its 1,000 workers. I've got nowhere to go. A crippling blow for the South. I don't know what I'm going to do. A bit of shell shock? Yeah, it is. I've got to go. This is Adelaide's National 9 News with Rob Kelvin and Kelly Nuster. Good evening from Tonsley Park where the atmosphere is bleak tonight. Not that long ago, Mitsubishi workers left the plant after getting the news they've dreaded for years. The company has decided to quit South Australia, putting a thousand people out of a job. They got the news at a mass meeting in the company canteen. The managing director was was visibly affected. He had to do what he, he didn't want to do. They want to close the operation, the operation of Mitsubishi by the 31st of March. At this stage, the union needs to sit down and find out why the urgency of closing. Indeed, it does seem a sudden move after the axe was hovering for so long. And to find out how it fell, we cross now to Nine's political reporter, Tom Richardson, in the city. Yeah, thanks, Rob. And certainly a grim day for South Australia, one of the icons of the automotive industry, closing its doors at the end of next month. The CEO made the announcement at a short time ago, just up the road. Mitsubishi Motors will pursue a full import strategy, business strategy in Australia and will no longer manufacture our large passenger car, the 380 sedan, which will in fact be discontinued. These are the bigger issues that we've had to address. Ongoing significant losses, declining large car market, the need for exports, the high exchange rates, and changing uh, structural changes to the consumer buying habits. Our priority now shifts to ensuring the welfare of our employees and other business partners and reassuring our customers. We will work with uh, uh, appropriate government and private sector agencies to establish a complete offering of counselling, job seeking and fin financial advisory services. And these will be made available on site to our employees and our families. Mitsubishi has a responsibility to uh, act uh, properly given the uh, government uh, support it's received. Prime Minister Kevin Rudd there and I'm now joined by the Premier Mike Rann. Well, Premier, there's really no sugarcoating this bitterest pill for the state today, is there? No, there's not. And now, of course, obviously our thoughts are with the Mitsubishi workers who've shown extraordinary loyalty to this company during, you know, 11 or 12 years of constant speculation about the future of the company. We're putting in $50 million in a joint package with Kevin Rudd, but also we've asked for Mitsubishi to pay back the money that they owe us, which is $35 million, and we're going to use that for economic development as well as infrastructure in the south. So it's about matching jobs for Mitsubishi workers who are losing their jobs, but also, of course, finding jobs in the south. You've been uh, told many times by Mitsubishi, Kevin Foley was there last year, that everything's safe and it's all business as usual. Do you feel betrayed? I think that all of us uh, are disappointed that Mitsubishi aren't meeting their obligations. I mean, we, we were told six years ago, I was told when I first was sworn in, that Mitsubishi was likely to fold, and that's why we put together together a rescue package to get them to reinvest in a new model car. They basically made a fundamental promise that they'd keep the place going till at least the end of 2010. So we're obviously disappointed that they couldn't sell the cars to allow that to happen. Well now, uh, the, um, the 380 is obviously going to be discontinued. You've often talked up the uh, inherent strength of South Australia, the mining boom, the defence industry, these strengths are really going to be tested now, aren't they? Well, obviously, you know, there's, we've now got 85,000 more jobs than there were six years ago when we first entered into the rescue package for Mitsubishi. So this is the strongest jobs growth the state's ever seen, the lowest unemployment the state's ever seen, and of course the mining and defence boom is still on its way. So our job is to try and get, make sure that we get jobs for those Mitsubishi workers, because their loyalty deserves to be repaid, but we want those jobs to be in the South. Premier Mike Rand, thank you very much for joining us. Rob, it's back to you. Thanks, Tom. Mr Rand, the failure of the 380 in the marketplace sealed the fate of Mitsubishi's Adelaide operations, and there are now fears that the job losses will extend beyond this plant and into the component sector. Staff had expected this news would come one day, but not so soon. 
Well, if it's destined to have everybody have to go live up north to work. Where's all the jobs in the south? You joke. I don't know yet. I don't can't comment. I don't know what I'm going to do. A bit of shell shock? Yeah, it is. I've got to go. It was going to come. It was going to come. All 1,000 workers will lose their jobs. Production will end on the 31st of March. Two-thirds will be let go then. The rest will wind down operations over the coming year. Only two years ago, the troubled car maker introduced a new model. The 380 was unveiled as the solution to the company's local troubles. The car was critically acclaimed, but didn't sell. The latest figures for January show sales of fewer than 700. I think that what's going on in manufacturing industry internationally is putting pressure on uh, domestic manufacturers here in Australia to think about uh, moving offshore to China and India. Mitsubishi is building a new factory in Russia. But the writing was on the wall here back in 2005, when financial woes led to the closure of Mitsubishi's Lonsdale engine plant and the axing of 700 jobs. Industry analysts say it's unlikely another car maker would take on Tonsley Park, which Mitsubishi bought from Chrysler in 1980. It's a big investment, uh, big capital investment to make, so it's a possibility but an outside chance. Today's decision will cause pain beyond the gates of Mitsubishi. Part-time jobs at component supplies are now on the line. Unions say for every job lost at Mitsubishi, another five jobs hang in the balance. Most of the workers live near the factory. The local economy will be the hardest hit. It is critical that the state and federal governments um, provide an adjustment package for South Australia. This will have a serious impact on the local economy. Dealers hope the news doesn't damage the sale of imported Mitsubishi models. They've increased their market share, so I'm hopeful that the dealers will be able to absorb what is a very, very bad shock. Workers at Tonsley Park have been told they don't need to come back to the factory until Monday to let the news sink in. What's happened's happened. Now life goes on. The company's going to help us out. So we'll be right. John Kerrison, National 9 News. I'm joined now by John Camillo from the Manufacturing Workers Union. John, it's been a very emotional day for the people here at uh, Tonsley Park. You must have felt it yourself. Yeah, very emotional after seven years of, uh, you know, emotional strain where the Mitsubishi is going to be here in Australia. The final crunch came today at 2.30 when uh, the company made the decision that there'll be no more Mitsubishi operation here at the Tonley site as of March the 31st this year. So it was a bit of a shock also that it was such uh, an early exit from Mitsubishi and at this stage we have not accepted that. How confident are you that the workers will get all their entitlements? At this stage the company has indicated that these workers uh, are guaranteed in regards to their uh, annual leave, long service leave and redundancy uh, entitlements. We need to uh, make sure that is the case over the next few weeks. We have the opportunity of meeting with all our shop stewards on Monday to discuss these issues and also there's an opportunity out of the enterprise bargaining that we can sit down and uh, look at the uh, redundancy for Longsdale and get a better agreement than what we had at Longsdale. Yeah, do they appear to be good, good packages? I've got to say in regards to the Longsdale agreement, it's probably one of the best and still is the best uh, redundancy agreements in the automotive industry in Australia. That is the best and I think it's going to be very, very hard to get anything better than that. We know that the company is saying the bottom line is they are making sure that every single worker will receive their entitlements and over the next few weeks we'll make sure and we'll put the company to task in regards to that. John Camillo, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And that wraps up our coverage from Tonsley Park. Tomorrow night we will look further into the issues raised by this afternoon's events. But for now, Kelly, it's back to you with...